Hi, welcome back. In this video, I want to look at an interesting little production technique that we're going to use on the Persian Santur instruments that we put in a couple of videos ago. Before I get to that, I just want to show you a couple of things I cleaned up in our arrangement here. On our GM drum track, let me open the mixer here. I just did a little bit of detuning. I opened it up, and what I did was I put the glide up in the pitcher just to get a bit of pitch modulation. And I also added in uh, an Apple loop from our Soundtrack Pro library, just a little transition effect to ease the transition between the two sections. I'll play it for you now just so you can hear the transition and the new sound on the drum kit. So you can hear a bit of detuned pitching on the drums and that nice little transition to help ease between the sections. But I want to look at the sand tour parts. You'll remember a couple of videos ago, we put in this basic part here. I'm going to solo it. And then we doubled it with another version of it, delaying the ADSR and slowing the attack and increasing the release. I want to show you an interesting little technique now for fattening this up. We have two parts, Santour A and Santour B. On the Santour B, I'm going to double it twice. I'm going to use this command here to create a new track with duplicate settings. Two more times, so we have the exact same thing. I'm going to open the inspector. And what I'm going to do is this. So this is our original. I'm going to pan it center. And then that clone of it, I'm going to open that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transpose it down, say, um, a whole octave and then tune it up an octave to bring it back to pitch. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing this. Listen to the change in timber. Okay, here's the original. I'm gonna solo it. Oh, sorry, there's the, here it is. That's the original, I'm gonna copy it down. You hear the difference, how thin it is? Okay, and then on the third version, I'm going to copy this down again, this region. And on the third version, I'm going to do it in the opposite direction. So in this one, I transpose down. Now I'm going to transpose up, let's say an octave, and then tune down an octave. Let's see what that sounds like. So very different sound. And let me pan these. I'm going to pan that one hard that way, and this one hard that way. And our original is centered. So let's listen to all three of them. And what I'm going to further do is I'm going to open up our transform window and humanize them a little bit. I have a humanized preset set up here just to randomize the note position and the velocity and the length of it. So I'm just going to go select only just to make sure I have the right amount of regions selected that I think I do. I always like to do this first, check with select only to make sure there's only three regions selected and then do the operate command. So I've randomized it a little bit. Let's listen now. Good. Now let's do the same thing with the part that has the delayed attack. All right, so I'm going to go two more instances of that. I'll take the original one and I'll center it. I'm going to copy this down. And then on that version of it, I'm going to transpose it down, let's say, I'll try nine just to be different and then go up nine, and let's listen to that. So here's the original. And now this altered version. Dramatically different timber. Now let's go to a third version, and on this one, I'll transpose up, say nine, the same thing. It doesn't have to be the same, but we're just experimenting here, and nine. Let's hear what that sounds like. Again, very different. All right, so let's pan these also. So I'm going to put that one hard that way, this one hard that way. And again, I'll select all three of them and randomize them a bit. It won't be quite as evident on this because of the nature of the delayed attack. It's kind of obscured and uh, won't have much effect, but I'm going to do it anyway. Select only three MIDI regions, operate, bang, it's done. If I looked in the event list now, I'd see that all the quantized positions are off by plus or minus 10 clock ticks and the lengths are randomized a little bit. So let's listen to those three. Very nice. Let's solo all of them. Let's look at our mixer. There they are all playing. So 
So a nice big fattened effect. I'm going to do something else now to fatten it up even more. I'm going to open up... All right, first of all, let me solo lock these. I'm going to go Option S so I don't lose them all. And I'm going to open up these instruments, these doubled ones, and I'm going to detune them slightly with the fine-tuning control. Let's do that one just a little bit that way. And then that one just a little bit that way. And then we have our second part, which I'll leave the default one centered, and then the clone of it that way, and this one that way. Let's hear what that sounds like. Ooh, nice and detuned. Let me hear that in context. Nice. All right, first I'm gonna make sure they're solo locked, and I'm gonna bounce this down because I'm using up six separate instances of the EXS24, I want to save my resources a little bit because I am running on a somewhat older computer. I don't want to tax it too badly, so I'm going to bounce it. I'm going to start a BART earlier just in case that randomization had some of the node ons starting right before the downbeat. And I'm going to go a bar later just because I am using reverb on this and I'm going to leave it trail off a bit. I don't mind committing to the reverb into this little sub bounce because I like the effect of it. I can modify it more later when I'm using it as a single audio file if I want to. So I have these six soloed all together. I'm going to go solo lock just to be safe. Option S, you see the little lock padlock there. They're soloed. Let me open my mixer. I'm going to scroll over to the end. I'm going to raise up my subgroup just a little bit. We have this all outputting to this Santour subgroup. I'll raise it a bit. And I'm going to bounce. So you're going to lose my voice for a moment when I call it the bounce dialog box, but I'll bounce it in real time so we can hear it. And then we'll move on. Okay, we're back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute all of these Persian Santour regions, and I'm going to mute the instruments also, just to save CPU power, just option clicking them quickly to free up resources for the videos to come. All right, and then I'm going to create a new audio track. I have one here, Audio 3, and I'm going to bring in that audio file that we just bounced. There it is. And let's listen. We'll see if we need to adjust the level. Nice. Sounding really good. One last thing I want to do before I end this video, I want to add a little intro onto our song. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to select all, move everything ahead by eight bars, and I want to bring in for an intro just our sand tour part, the bounced audio file, and the last part we put down last video, that synthy sound called Fairy Wah where we, oops, where we were using the LFOs as a modulator to create some wild rhythms. Let's see what that sounds like. Beautiful. One last little touch, just to ease that intro into the song. I'm going to bring our little effect that we put in, and I'm going to copy that over by option dragging. And I want to see what that sounds like to ease the transition into the beginning of the song. Let's hear. One last little tweak, I'm going to select that and I'm going to go under our edit menu and go select all following. So I have everything selected in the rest of the song, except for that transition. I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to move it all ahead by one bar. So let's see what that sounds like.
Nice. So that little sweeping effect is a nice transition into the part of the song where the whole band comes in. These parts would benefit a bit from some automation with the volume and the santour part coming down a bit as the sweep comes up. But that's for another time. So that's it for now. Stay tuned. And in the rest of the videos in this series, we're going to look at building EXS instruments from scratch. So stay tuned. See you next time.